Okay, I'm here at my bee mentor's um, house because he is unloading supers off of his beehive. We're gonna take a look at that. So, let's go. It's kind of invasive, so I've got the full, full gear. Well, not pants. I mean, I've got long pants on, but. some of this footage for you guys. All right, today is all, uh, July 14th, and as you can see, I've got several supers on my bees here. Those are all, each one of them individual hives are stacked up with what we call supers that carry the, the, the frames in it that they put the honey in. And today we're gonna take some of those supers off and uh, take them somewhere and have them spun out. So I'll put this chemical on a felt pad on the top that's over there, and I'll show you in a minute just put a little chemical on it and if you get it in the sun it reacts and it causes a gas it doesn't hurt the bees doesn't kill the bees they just don't like it and it runs them down because there's so many bees in the top when i take the super off i got to get the bees out of there mm -hmm. so i'll show you as we go okay they're pretty mean. Right, today. i'm not even doing nothing yet Get some pine straw. Come on. Should be dry. Get the hair on my back of my hand a little bit every time. Oh, come on. Top on it is another thing. But I don't have any. Pretty good boys. Pretty good girls. This is my felt top. But it needs to be in the sun to make it work better. This is called Bego. It's a commercially uh, bought chemical from bee places, Apri. So, let's get this thing going here, get it hot. I'm gonna start smoking a little bit. That's where I'm going to put the first super. All right, here we go with the Bego. Hope it's hot enough to get them to get it to go. It's not warm enough. It needs to be sun shining on this, but it is what it is. Then we got to break each hive with their bond. This broke free. So like I said, it works a lot better if the sun's shining on the hive yeah. and uh, that chemical can react when the heat and the sun and it really creates a gas and it runs them down. You gotta be careful though. If you leave it on there too long, they'll start coming out of the bottom. They'll start running out of the bottom and you don't want to get the wrong one to leave yeah. the nest. <laughs> and Important. that is the queen. Right. <laughs> Just wait a few minutes.
what will you do? You'll just grab the rest of them later on in the season and take them up to your buddy? Once I get those those taken off, yeah. I'll bring the hive, the, those supers out here, let them clean them up. Yeah. And then I'll take these off and set those on the bottom. Uh -huh. My next go around in a couple weeks. Oh, gotcha. What will they do in the meantime? Be crowded. <laughs> but there's enough on them. They'll be fine in the meantime. They just won't be, have no place to put any more honey, probably. Not, not cool. for a while, but they got so much honey now. It's, yeah, well that kind of signal to the queen to like, slow mm -hmm. down laying or? It all depends on what the flow is. Right, right now, I believe there's a pretty good flow of pine tree, a uh, palm tree. You see that tree right there? See those white looking? Yep. See the green white looking sprout? Uh-huh. Well, right when they first come out, they have nectar on them. And the bees are on them. Right now, we're in a pretty, we're in the middle of the honey flow as far as the palm tree. Early season, people take their bees to the gallberries, and it's a real clear honey, and it's real thick, and it's real intense, and it's a good honey. Also, palmetto honey is great. For all you guys that's got prostate, that palmetto is the same stuff they use to uh, to make the uh, medicine. prostate medicine out of saw palmetto. Well, the bees make honey out of palmetto, so it's good for you. I ain't saying it's gonna cure you overnight, but it helps. Yeah. And it tastes good. Then later in the season, as the uh, gallberry first, and then palmetto follows in on that. But before that, early season, we have maple trees around here, like in March, that mm -hmm. actually get a little bit of honey. And now we have an invasive tree here from China called uh, the Chinese talum. Uh-huh. And it makes a pretty good honey, yeah. surprisingly. And a lot yeah. of this stuff here is from them, the yeah. talon, the Chinese talon. And that comes in in May and June. Yeah. And that's like highly invasive. It's it is an invasive, yeah, it is, but the only, there, there is a silver lining. The honey right. makes pretty good, I mean, the bee makes pretty good honey out of it. Yeah. Any bees on the bottom? Nope. Good enough for government work. <laughs>
how the process goes on for the remainder of the frames. Mr. Larry uncaps using an uncapping comb and a hot knife. And Mr. Danny hands him the frames and loads them up into the spinner until the spinner has 12 frames in it and is ready to get turned on. Twelfth frame goes in. Spinner gets turned on. And away it goes. The honey fills up into the bottom of the extractor. Later, they'll empty it into a bucket when it gets full. But for now, they just let it spin for a few minutes. They're the one that spun out. You pick them up and see how light they are. I'll take those back and set them out for my bees, and they'll clean them up in no time. Yeah, they'll, you know, get up, they'll go in there and be all over. You don't lose no honey when you got bees in the yard. They'll clean it up very good. Of course, while we wait, there's lots of good combo. You think? I like garlic. You can put garlic on an orange, and it's still going to taste like a garlic or a lemon. Yeah. All you taste is stinking garlic. Stinking garlic. Yeah, but it's good for you, though, Larry. Never, no, they ain't never so been good. any in my house. <laughs> you never eat any garlic? No, sir. Yeah, but garlic has a lot of good health. It health certainly benefits. does. Yes. Well, I guess I'm going to die. She early. feeds it to her chickens. It's got to be good. Hey, that's like an onion. No I onion. make a. I you make don't a, like onions no either? Onion. No. I make a fire cider that has. Uh, it sits in apple cider vinegar and we put peppers in it and onions and garlic and horseradish and ginger and it sits there for about a month. Lord have mercy, you got the chickens on the juice. <laughs> <laughs> that's not for the chickens, that's for me. And I wake up and, I wake up in the morning and take a take a little shot of it in the shot glass and it'll wake you up. It'll wake you up. Look here, let me tell you something. You're going to be like you will give us. You eat all them pine needles and he died at 60 years old. Oh, get out of here. I'm telling you. He, he didn't did. die that early. Yes, he did. He was in his 60s. He, he was, was a always eating pine guy. needles. And oh, yeah, he yeah. ate a lot of natural yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't live very long. I remember him saying, did you know that pine needles are edible? What did he die from? Who knows? I know. Oh, <laughs> probably stomach problems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Of course, there's always a lot to learn, too. There's a lot of cheaters in the bee business, and they'll be selling you gallberry that oh, ain't, ain't gallberry. They'll be selling you tupelo that ain't tupelo. Tupelo is pretty easy to figure out because mm -hmm. it's got a it never baby. granulates. Tupelo never granulates. Yeah. And uh, even in Publix last year, they, a buddy of mine sent me a picture that they were having. They had some little old one-pound one, one pound jar of two blood it was selling for 15 bucks and it was granulated. It was already starting to see I out. think the manager at Publix, you know, he didn't he didn't know any better. Right. But there was something else in it. Right. A Tupelo does not granulate. So uh, a lot of most of the honey you get at a grocery store has been packed all of it's been pasteurized and so when they pasteurize it. They boil it where it won't granulate because they're not gonna they're not going to throw it away, so they they boil it. They bring it to a boil, 165 degrees, and that ruins the honey. And that takes everything that's good for you out of it. So that's why you want raw, unpasteurized honey. Yeah. You can you can actually warm honey up when it begins to granulate, and it'll be it won't it'll take it another month or two to granulate. You can warm it up. Some people just put it in the sun. They just put it out in the sun and it turns it right back to honey. It's an all natural product. They've actually found honey in Egyptian graves, 4,000 years old, and guess what? It's still good. Still good. But they're incredible little creatures. I think the thing that amazes me most about bees. Complex. 
is in her lifetime, a bee only makes one eighth of a teaspoon of honey. So you're probably talking about what? That much? One eighth of a teaspoon of honey, probably. In his lifetime, he lives 45 days. But guess what? When you've got 60,000 flying every day, that's a lot of eights. Yeah. So it's done by mass production. Mass production. They are the epitome of mass production. They'll actually forage as far. They'll go as far as two mile radius. And see, you see a lot of people professing organic honey. Probably not so. Because here's the deal. If somebody, if a bee flies a two mile radius and anybody within that two miles is right. using a fertilizer or they're using Roundup yeah. or they're using this, yeah. it ain't organic no more. Yeah. I mean, can't you really you could be, market organic you, honey? You, or? <laughs> yeah, the, you, could, you could actually say you're out in the woods, say in the middle of Osceola National Forest. Yeah. You can get away from houses and people and stuff of their yard, so you can consider that organic honey. Basically, what they call scalzery honey. <laughs> a lot of shysters in the bee business. So, do you take your honey to market or anywhere? No, I don't have to. People, people know just him. come to you? They, over the years, here. just over the years, you know, I had a guy a couple of years ago ask me, Well, do you have a car? And I said, Yes, yeah, right out there. You can see it when you drive by. Yeah. Bee eyes on there. <laughs> but hey, over the years, I don't really do it for the money, it's just a hobby, and uh, I'm still way too, too low for the, I mean, I'm still selling honey for $12 a quart, all my buddies are up around 18 and 22. Oh so, but that's the uh, wildflower here in the yard, the dogberry up hour away so I have to get a little gas money so I you sell it for 14 and the Tupelo honey ham. Believe it or not, Tupelo honey wholesale sells for about seven dollars a pound. And mine is still that. Wholesale. Wholesale. So I had a friend that took well you Alan took them five drums two years ago to Savannah B and sold them for twenty three thousand and four six hundred dollars. Seven dollars a pound, fifty-five gallon drums. So, but that's your in the United States, Tupelo is your gold standard of honey. It's just not much of it around. No, I tell everybody you got honey and you got honey and you got Tupelo. Different deal. And we did real bad on it this year because the honey flow only lasted about three weeks and the whole three weeks we were getting bombed with rain every day and most of the two blow honey went down the Ohupi River. Yeah, Galberry, I did great this year on Galberry. Did terrible on Tupelo and did fine on Wildflower. Did good on it. This is the last one. Good. It's full. I don't even know if we're going to be able to spin all this out Let before we take a look at it. Because it's going to come up and touch the bottom That's of the good, spinner. That's good, and I want to drain it before we start the extractor because that way it'll go in the belt, go through the screen real smooth. Okay. That wax is set to the top.
I'm going to immediately flee. Yeah. Because if not, I'll be taking the swarm of bees. Yeah. Mr. Danny took six supers in for extraction that day. His bees packed 15 gallons into those supers. Honeybees are masterfully designed creatures. Thank you.